There's a big fish. Clear as that water is, they just slide down there. They're almost invisible, other than the fact that they look blacker than the bottom. Pound for pound in fresh water, I say smallmouth bass rule. Sheer fighting stamina and a truly astounding leaping ability makes itself. And by nature, smallies, or bronzebacks as you'll often hear them called, are extremely curious fish, much akin to other members of the sunfish family. Such widespread availability and a willingness to take just about any kind of bait or lure adds further appeal to anglers looking for some incredible thrills. But like all game fish, smallmouth bass and their movements are products of their environment, meaning finding them depends on learning as much as possible about their preferences throughout the year. Generally speaking, we're talking about a fish that feels most at home in clean, clear water natural lakes, reservoirs, and rivers with fairly moderate current. For breakfast, lunch, and dinner, smallies prefer crayfish, but just about anything available on the local menu will typically suffice. And although they utilize many different types of cover and structure, find rocks and strategic locations on rocky structures, and more often than not, you'll find smallmouth bass. To me, the challenge and joy in hunting for and ultimately catching huge smallmouths is a true personal passion that always somehow sets the world right for me. And last June, like I so often do when I need a smallmouth fix, I went to Mille Lacs Lake in central Minnesota for some personal time. Well, here we are. Early June, I'm wearing a heavy guide wear vest over a shirt and I've got a jacket with me because it's cold in Minnesota. This is the craziest spring you've ever seen. But I'm going to see if I can snoop around and find a big, uh, few big smallmouth. It's the right time of the year. They should have spawned already. Don't know if they have. This is my first time uh, out on this particular lake. So we're going to find out. Well, one thing I will promise you is if we can find them, there are big guys out here. There are six, seven, even the odd bigger pound smallmouth. And lots of threes and fours and fives. Well, I don't have the foggiest idea what's going on here, but uh, I guess we're gonna snoop around a little and find out. Water temperature is 53 degrees. That's cold. Um, when I talked to the guy at the resort this morning, he said the fish were 8 to 16 feet of water. They're skittish up here in this very clear water. So I stopped my E-Tech out here and I slid in quietly with the trolling motor. Just started looking. And all of a sudden, there goes a fish. There goes four fish. I mean, look at that. We're in 8 feet of water or so. And you can see the bottom like it's your bathtub. Oh. Well, first bite of the day. I think it's a really nice bite. Water's clear out here. Look at the size of this thing. That's a big fish. Where's my net? There we go. My God, look at this thing. First fish of the day. <laughs> nice big fat healthy fish but look at this big chunk out of his mouth I don't know what happened to you my guess is somebody caught you before and wasn't very kind to you but water is clear there's just a few big fish I've seen probably eight or ten fish just kind of floating around they're not real crazy about biting oh there's another small mouth going right there I just looked down there's a small mouth sliding and I flipped that jig and minnow over, and he looked at it, and I just let it swing. And bang! See, there is no such thing as a small one here. That's what's so fun about this place. Now, see, you could be a Facebook fish, you know that? Send a picture to Chrissy and say, look at this. Would you like one of these? I'm gonna catch a big one. 
Well, what have we learned? Other than I can catch them on a tube and I can catch them on a minnow, and I don't particularly care which they want to bite. And my lure calf got this little bait well up here. You can put a minnow sack in here. Oh, look at that big sled right there. He looks like he got hit by a motor or something. Boy, there's gonna. <laughs> Oh, there goes my minnow. Look at this toad. I mean, that's another three and a half pound fish, four pound fish. And you know, the exciting part is I've caught three fish and I want two of the three bite. And that's something a lot of people don't even think about when they go fishing is the ability to sight fish. Well, got another little reef here, huh? I'm gonna give this a little snoop and see what's around here. Maybe nothing. Then again, maybe two or three more big smallmouth. I'm not expecting to catch a ton, although it's possible. I mean, it might run into a heck of a school. This year it is so cold, it is such a different year. I'm still trying to get a grip. I'm finding one here, two there. Score one for the tube. Different reef, same fish. I don't know how big this guy is, but I mean, that bait hadn't hit the water for just a foot or two and he was on it. Or she was on it, whatever the case is here. There you go. Another nice fish. Thing of it is with smallmouth, when they're up where they can get at it, you can generally catch them on a grub or a tube or some kind of a small little chunk of bait like that. I'm using just this crawfish colored one here. Every cast I'm making, if you notice, and off to the side. I'm catching them, but they're spooky. <laughs> Come on, where are you going, mama? Watch this. Here. Just dragging the grub. Yeah, let's just let it swim right in there. <laughs> to me, a smallmouth is about as big smallmouth like that is about as beautiful as a fish gets. Yeah, she's 20 inches. Whew, boy, that's a pretty fish. These bass should have spawned a couple of weeks ago. But there's like they're, the water's so cold, they're still just up on the reef feeding. Which probably means that the bulk of the bigger fish, they're not up on top here, but they're using this reef or someplace on an edge. Maybe I can use that jig and minnow and get down on the edge and find them if I can't find them up on top. Oh boy. Oh man. You set the hook and it's like setting into my Suburban. Oh, big boil on the water. Another big, big fish. Oh, there's another one with it. That's always a good sign. There was another one with it that had to be twice this size. I never even seen any of you little guys when I was looking. Heck, you're not even three pounds. How about being disappointed with a smallmouth that's not quite three pounds? You can get spoiled here. I'm gonna flip one off this way. See how I'm putting it way out to the side? Now I'm gonna take the trolling motor and we're just gonna ease it along out here. Cause the other smallmouth that I just saw, I wanna catch that one too. Oh, got him that time. Oh boy, this is a big fish. It hasn't even come up yet. Oh, holy buckets. There's nothing like early season smallmouth. See, look at that. Just another football. <laughs> Oh, look at this.
Jesus. <laughs> Tell me fishing gets any bigger or better than this. If this thing is in five or five and a half pounds or more. Oh, was that fun. Real complicated system. That one, now I've caught about equal on a tube jig or a little jig head in a minnow. And that one hit a jig head in a shiner minnow. Secondly, I don't want to say this too loud because there's other people on the reef and they're not catching diddly, but the fish are kind of spooky because the water is clear up on top. So I'm going off of the edge down here in a flat out in front of the reef and that's where we're catching the fish. Scamp, you can keep your mouth shut too. Now, if you've never fished smallmouth, you've got a thing waiting yet. May not be in your bucket list, it should be in your every year when I go fishing, I make sure I take at least one trip for smallmouth. If you're new to smallmouth fishing, let me tell you they're a member of the sunfish family along with largemouth and uh, Kentucky bass and so forth. But there's nothing quite like a smallmouth. Every one of them got little red eyes and you bring them up to the boat, they're like snarling at you and that eye is looking at you and it's just like, man. And you thumb them and they clamp down on you. <laughs> they, they give you everything they've got and a whole bunch that you can't imagine that they've got. I guess that's why I like them so much. You notice I'm just kind of flicking my wrist and tossing the bait. It's because I'm very lucky to work with St. Croix Rod Company. They make the best rods in the world, period. I mean, that's a heck of a statement, but that's the absolute truth. And this is a Legend Extreme rod, um, six foot three inches, um, medium action, very light tip, extra fast taper, so there's a tremendous amount of power. I mean, I can throw a 16th ounce jig with this, not a problem, with a bait on it or a grub or something. Um, I'm throwing eighth out. Oh yeah, right here, right in the middle of that. I was gonna say I'm throwing eighth ounce, which is not much. Oh, good fish too. Wonder how many of these I've caught in my life and sit here and just marvel that. They're like trout, they won't quit fighting until it is completely done. You see them there? Enjoy him, skump. We'll get him. This is a big fat fish. Look at the size of this puppy skunk. Huh? Here, gonna give him a lick? How about you? Wanna check him out, Bailey? How about you? Would you like to be here catching something the size of this? That's, I was gonna say that's about been my average for today. But this might be a little big because this is a big healthy fish. He's gotta be four pounds, very, very close to four pounds. Now you think about that for an average on smallmouth. Not too many places you can do it. Wonderful. Do you know what I mean about the little beady red eyes? Look at him. Okay, over you go. Oh, there's another smallmouth going right there. There's another one looking. There he is. Oh, good fish too. Real good fish. Every smallmouth's a good fish. What am I talking about? Look at that bite. This water is so clear. It's just like a fishing in an aquarium. You can see all the colors down below the water. <laughs> Surprise, surprise, surprise. <laughs> he thinks he's an E-Tech. Well, come on. Hey, uh, Muttley, yeah, you gotta get out of the road. We caught him, you helped. I'll give you credit. Oh man, wait till you see this thing. Mm. 
fat as a football, gorgeous as a fish can get. And I don't know about you folks, I know about him and I know about me. We have had a wonderful case of smallmouth therapy today. You can never get tired of them. This is uh, therapy for the body, therapy for the mind, therapy for the soul, therapy for the boys. Huh? Yes. So I have one last thing to say to the smallmouth gods. God, I love them. I just love them. The Great Taste from Chris's Kitchen, brought to you by the Great Taste of Johnsonville Sausage. Hi everyone, and for all of you who have been asking, today we'll be making a great recipe in a slow cooker. It's called crock pot fish with fresh asparagus, and it's the perfect answer whenever you've got some fresh fish and you want to keep things easy. Now the best thing about this recipe is that you can literally use any kind of white flaky fish you happen to have. Sunfish, crappies, bass, walleye, and pike, they're all good. Now to begin, you just lay it in the bottom of your crock pot, nice and even. And then I like to take a little bit of salt and pepper and a little lemon zest over the top of that. And you want to keep your lemon out because we're going to serve it with a little bit of uh, lemon slices and onions. Some parsley, carrots, and fresh asparagus. And just lay it over the top. Put your cover on. And I'm telling you, hour, hour and a half max, and your dinner is going to be done. And wait till you see how beautiful this is once it comes out of this crock pot. Now, just take a look at that crock pot fish with yummy fresh asparagus. What's that they say? Just set it and forget it? Exactly. I'm Chris Winkleman. A great day of running around on Mille Lacs and checking in on smallmouth bass. Now that's what I call personal time very well spent. And isn't that always what fishing for any kind of fish is all about? Exploring the waters, figuring out all the details of the day, and getting the thrill of catching fish by doing it on your own? I mean, jumping into the middle of Mother Nature's patterns and finding success is never an easy deal. And that's really what we're seeking to do each and every time we go fishing. The old bait and switcheroo. Over a lifetime of trying, a guy or gal can get pretty darn good at fooling fish in the watery playing fields where they live. <laughs> at least, so I've heard. I'm Babe Winkleman. Thanks so much for watching, and until next time, everybody, hey, good fishing.